Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. I'm Tom Pollan, beaming out to you from uh, the Sunshine Coast in, in Australia, joined today by John Benson. John, a warm good day from down under, sir. Where, where are you hanging out? Uh, we're in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. How old's the weather in December? Gorgeous. Lord of the day. Yeah, 70 degrees right now. It's gorgeous. And a little little birdie by the name of David Deutsch just told me you just got back from Italy. How was that? Wonderful, man. Wonderful. We had a great time and I'd never been before, but it became my favorite country to visit for sure. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. North or south or all over? All over. Uh, the wifey took me all over, which was great. And so, yes. but right. fell in love with it totally. Well, well, welcome back just in time for, um, for Christmas. Um, folks, John is one of the top copywriters alive uh, and that's referenced by other top copywriters who regard them as as being one of in in the top echelon he's also the founder of benston.ai so john's surname without the vowels b n s n .ai kind of the magic button app for sales copy so if you've ever struggled with words and that's probably 99% of the you, <laughs> the population is you're going to be quite interested in this little interview the, the title is Teasingly, from one of the world's best copywriters, is the one thing small businesses can do to three times sales. John, mm -hmm. I'm you've you've got me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I'm all <laughs> ears. Let's kick off. Our seven minutes starts now. Question number one is: Who is your ideal client? Uh, small business owners, marketers, and un entrepreneurs. Thank copywriters you. would be a second. What would be a second? Copywriters would be a second. Copywriter. So. Copywriter, the copywriter for the copywriters and small yeah. business owners. Question two is what is the problem you solve for your ideal client? Uh, we give them words that sell. Give them words that sell. Love it. And question, and where are these words used? What, these the, words are used in everything. I mean, this is this is the one thing that I'm talking about. The one thing that I'm talking about that will lift a business faster than anything else is understanding the words that sell to your ideal buyer to understand their buying language is in specific. So that is what we help them do. We help them understand their ideal buyers buying language, just like a love language, your ideal customers have buying languages and we help you decipher that. Makes a lot of sense. So they're going to use them on websites and email campaigns. Uh, yes. And where have I missed? Where, where would be the other main applications? Webinars, video sales letters, sales pages, ads, email campaigns. Uh, email is just so drastically underrated as a marketing behemoth. You right. can. We doubled our business this year. Doubled it not in marketing speak, but in literal income speak, simply by increasing the amount of emails that we send. So it's just, Amazing. yeah, Amazing. Just gotta, gotta <laughs> And and so. Let's go to question three, five and a half minutes left, plenty of time. What would you say are the typical symptoms of someone who who needs to reach out and, and find out more about what you do? What, what's going on in your business? Poor response rates? Uh, what else? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, they, they have an offer or an idea for an offer and they have no idea how to sell it or they have no idea why it isn't selling. The offer just isn't getting traction either on ads or emails or or a webinar or whatever it may be. So that's usually the people that reach out. Right. And this is a bit of a curveball question. Mm -hmm. How do people know the response rate could be a lot better? It's just, uh, you generally find that people are just saying, we're just not getting, we've virtually no response from this. And what, what's the benchmark? Do you think, is there a benchmark that says, yeah, you could do a lot better? Yeah, there's a lot of KPIs that we look at, but from a client point of view, from what they're seeing, it's it's measured in dollars. It's not measured in much of anything else. I mean, there are a few people that we, we work with that are just high reach people. They're more interested in impact, so they don't need to make the money, but that's such a relative few. Most people just look at it by saying, you know, we're spending X, we're making Y, that doesn't feel right. right. They should be doing better. Right. <laughs> they should be yeah, making us more money. Yeah, they're yeah. just not getting the ROI, the return on investment. Right. Thank you for that. Right. And we look, we're talking about people who are proactively marketing, right? So they're wanting to grow their business. The intent is there. They've got a serious intent. And they're making they're doing stuff to try and grow their business. Question four, therefore, is what would you say are some of the common mistakes people make when they're trying to solve this ROI problem? It's like trying to fix your car by yourself without being a mechanic. You know, it's it's not a good idea. Uh, unless you're broken down on the side of the road, you should call a mechanic. 
you know, you should go to a mechanic to fix your car if you don't know a lot about cars. Uh, right. Likewise, copywriters are both, you know, scientists and artists combined in a sense. We understand persuasion, so there's psychology to it. So that's a weird mix of things that makes it kind of rare for someone or an application as what I, I do uh, to be able to even do it. So trying to do it on your own is usually a mistake. Um, having input is absolutely vital. So if you work with a copywriter or an application like Benson that, that does understand what you're trying to say and then combines it with what we know works, that's gonna give you the best of all worlds. Your message will get across, but in a way that lands and resonates and creates action and creates a kind of a compelling sense to buy versus a, a passing fancy. And that's what we want. We want, we want to compel people to really think this is the solution to the problem. Thank you for that. So, so big mistake DIY. Yeah. Um, and, and people really just got to get to the point where they, you know, so, so Mark Twain, you know, said, um, it's not the things we think we, it's not the things we don't know that hurt. It's the things we think we know some yes. we can do, which just ain't so. So let's flip it. The two and a quarter minutes left a top free action, just a top tip someone could take. Now, to be clear, it's not going to solve the problem. They probably need to work with you for that or with Benson, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it might take them a step in the right direction. What have you got? Well, I can send them to a free uh, training that I have. If that's, I don't know if that's cool on your show or not, but they, it, that's something that would start. And what that training does is help people understand what I'm talking about when I say understand the, the words that your ideal buyer needs to know. So we start by creating a buyer's roadmap. Like what is the roadmap of that language? What are their goals, hopes, fears, dreams? Where can, where can you start? And, and the cool thing is you can use AI to get a lot of this done. So I have training on how to use ChatGPT to do that. Now wow. there are easier ways. Benson is by far and away easier, but ChatGPT will get it done with some <laughs> with some elbow grease. So, but this will get you inter introduced to the idea of this and why it's so important. Important. It's like having a buyer's Bible, so I think it's important to have that. Well, let's let's do that. Let's let's get people some help. Where, where can they go for that? Uh, sure, you can go to johnbenson.com, j-o-n-b-e-n-s-o-n.com forward slash roadmap for the buyer's roadmap. So if you go there, you will see uh, it's an opt-in, and you can get free training, and that just puts you right into the mix. <laughs> um, fantastic. So that's johnbenson.com, j-o-n-benson.com forward slash roadmap. And mm -hmm. question, it's kind of like a bonus value for you folks. Um, was the next question I was going to ask you, John, is tell us about Benson AI, uh, because people can go there as well, right? Uh, Benson AI, Benson.ai, yeah, BNSN.ai. Uh, Benson AI is the world's first promptless AI. So we don't, we are the next gen of AI. We, we took this a step further and decided that we would not only train our models on only the best copywriters and best copy campaigns in history, meaning that we were looking at multi hundred million dollar campaigns, and this is what it's trained on rather than all of the internet. But we are also promptless, meaning that you don't have to worry about what to type into the little window to get it to do what you want it to do. Uh, we take care of that for you. It's very similar to what Steve Jobs did with the telephone. Remember when the when flip phones were around and Steve Jobs came out with the iPhone and everything changed? This is the same thing. I believe that AI is going into a promptless world and that promptless world removes the need to be a prompt engineer to figure out what should I ask it to get exactly what I want when we've already figured out most of that for you. And you just click a few buttons and choose from drop That's downs right. and copy and paste and boom. Yeah. So, so that like folks is uh, Benson, so John Benson's the surname without the vowels, B N S N dot A I. Mm -hmm. uh, John, got to wrap it up. Uh, extraordinary value already. Thank you. But one more question. Mm -hmm. What's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? And the answer, please, in 25 seconds. 25 seconds. I'd say the question that you didn't ask was why. Why is it, why are words more important than say video or something else? Why are words so vitally important? And the answer to that would be people think, oh, I should do video marketing. I should do YouTube. I should do this. I should do that. Everything is centered on words. And the, the ultimate form of persuasion is when people hear something and they see it. So your Perfect. words have to match. Perfect. And I, you know, there's that old saying, a picture speaks a thousand words, but 12 words can create a picture. Exactly. Explosion! If fireworks over, uh, I don't know, the Statue of Liberty on New Year's Eve, bang, there's a picture in your brain. 
probably less than 12 words. John Benson, thank you so much for your time uh, and your contribution to making the marketing world a better place. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.